In this video, I show you how I prepare for tile, how I installed the tile, and how I grouted. If that interests you or you want to see a grout that you will be happy with for years to come, then stick around. Welcome back to Weekend Warrior Workshop DIY where we get things done. Hi, my name is Derek and in today's video we are tiling and grouting in preparation to build a custom vanity cabinet in our master bathroom remodel. So let's dive right into the video. Alright, so I'm here working on the vanity. I've mixed my uh, mortar. This is a non-modified since I'm putting it on curdy board. I need to make sure it's non-modified. So what I am doing here is under the vanity, I want to make sure that the lines on the tiles above match the lines when you open the cabinet door. So this is going to be inside a vanity. I want to make sure those vertical lines line up. And so what I did is I put my laser on and then made a pencil mark. So that gives me my, my starting point. That way as I'm tiling to the right, it'll make sure and line up and it'll turn out to be a nicer tile job. So just a helpful hint when you're doing the tile, little details like that make a world of a difference when uh, you're tiling. Now so. when I was also laying out, I had my vertical laser that I was lining up. I also have my horizontal laser at the same time. So what I did is I put a board down here uh, as a starter board and I'm going to use that um, I wedged it up on both sides so that it's perfectly level across at the same level as the other horizontal tiles all the way around the bathroom shower area so this will give me my nice uh, ledger board start which will give me a solid foundation to start laying these tiles upward so that when I set them on there uh, they don't start sliding down the wall and they stay nice and level then after the vertical I go vertical then I'll be able to come back after it sets, remove that board out, and then start laying the tiles underneath. And then I'll just use blue tape to tape it to the tile above that's already dried and set on the wall. So uh, I've used that strategy before. It works really well for me. Uh, you might have another strategy that works well for you. So I'll leave it in the comments if you have a different strategy. I'd like to hear it. All right, so one uh, tip that I uh, have learned in the tiling part that I enjoy at least with the subway tile is doing what's called back buttering and so it allows me to work at a pace and make sure that the mortar doesn't dry on me as I put it on the wall and then set tile. So back buttering is pretty much where you take your, your mortar, put it on your uh, trowel and you give it a nice um, coat, make sure you cover the entire back of it and then just take your trowel, scrape the grooves in it all off if there's any exposed then you'd wipe that off and then you just set it right on the wall then I get my spacers where I want it and I give it a nice uh, twist back and forth just to make sure that it's set in there and then wipe off any of the excess and sometimes you'll have a little bit on the edge just take a wet rag clean up the edges and you're good to go now after doing this a couple times test it so you can take a putty knife pry that tile back off make sure that it it looks like it's covered if you still have those grooves from your trowel mark in there then you're either not pushing hard enough or the backer board has some kind of dip in it that it's causing that. So if, if your backer board is not perfectly level, this probably isn't going to work for you. You might have to float it first to get it nice and level. But once you have it nice and level and you do the back buttering and you get the pressure nice, uh, then you have some nice solid uh, connection and it'll end up drying, working out really well for you. Another tip um, is just to have a bucket of water with some rags. Makes it easy to clean up. Um, as you're doing it so you don't end up with mortar 
all over the tiles and letting it dry that way. So, all right, so now that I've um, hit the tile all the way towards the wall, I just want to cover um, how to mark it to cut it. So I'm going to take a full tile and it's, it's the size I need is less than half the tile. So I'm going to end up saving the other piece after I cut it because I want the factory edge on both. So I'll end up using this uh, tile and then when I get two more rows up, I'll end up using the other side of it. So I'll save that cutoff piece just to um, save tile. The piece in the middle I'll end up throwing away because it will no longer have the factory edge on it. So with that, what I'll do is I'll set the tile in there and then I need to make sure that I don't mark it right to the edge of the tile, but leaving um, the, the size of the spacer of the grout. So what I end up doing is setting the factory edge against the wall and then taking the account of that spacer and then marking it. And then when I glue it, I'll take the non-factory edge and put it into the wall. And then after I'm done, I'll end up using a um, grout caulking uh, to cover that. Gives it a nice finished off look. So go ahead and set it in there. And then about the spacer of the grout, the about the distance of the spacer, mark that. And as you can see, I have my line here, and I'm going to actually cut the um, paint, the actual um, mark. So we will mark this as an X here so we don't cut the wrong side. And then I'll end up actually making that same measurement over here. So when I get two rows up, uh, it'll be the same uh, tile there. All right, so I'm out here at my uh, sliding table. Uh, this table actually slides into the blade. Highly recommend uh, purchasing this. I wish I would have had this for the other bathroom I did. But one tip that's really helpful, because as you're cutting tile, especially with porcelain tile, um, I haven't cut much natural stone, so I can't speak to that. But with regard to the porcelain tile, um, as the blade's cutting, it has a little vibration. And when you get towards the end, um, if tile is not supported enough, it ends up cracking, cracking off, and, and it might be on a the side where you want it saved. So what I ended up doing was just taking a piece of backer board. This is a half inch hardy backer board. And I set it down and then I lifted my blade up where it just went into the backer board. And then I ran it through uh, the blade. And what that does is this gives me a zero clearance. Uh, I do a lot of woodworking. So we call this a zero clearance guide. And the benefit of that is when I take my tile and I set it up right on the mark uh, where I need it. I'm able to line it up right on the spot where I need to because I know exactly where the blade is going to cut. And then I have it supported here and then underneath right on each side a nice strong support. So what I end up doing is I put my hold this down on each side making sure not to get my fingers next to the blade and as I'm guiding through I'm just putting pressure down. What that allows is for the blade not to vibrate as much on the piece and causing a nice clean cut here. And so we'll go ahead and uh, cut that and show you. benefit of having this zero clearance um, piece of scrap here is I just cut this piece and I want to make sure I get an exact um, size so what I do is I just set this on here and if you look I can set the tile right on the outside edge of that blade cut and by doing that then allows me to move adjust this piece to line up perfectly on this side and then I have it marked now I can remove this and then I'll go ahead and cut it and we'll see if it matches up so as you can see by doing that we get two pieces that are perfectly the same exact size and I didn't have to measure but the one time so it's a great strategy to use uh, the zero clearance piece not only gives you a nice uh, clean cut, uh, but it also allows you uh, to reference off of the blade and set your tile where it needs to be cut 
uh, very rapidly. Now, as you're tiling, if you have some, right here, I have some plumbing that's in the way. And so what I did is I set the tile up there. I made my mark um, on the left and right. And then I set it along the side to get my mark on the back. And then it's a curved tile. So I went ahead and, uh, it's a curved pipe. And so I went ahead and drew a, a um, arc to it. And so I'll take this out on the wet tile saw and try to cut that uh, circular as best I can. Uh, just know that there'll be uh, grout and also some caulking around it and then I'll also have a, a cover plate that'll cover it up. So it doesn't have to be perfect, but uh, the nicer you get, um, it'll kind of help you hone in your skills. So if you ever do have a cut that's exposed, uh, like I do up here, I have several cuts that are exposed. And so it just helps you uh, develop your skills uh, so this is a great way to practice that. Uh, so even though it, it doesn't have to be perfect, it's a great way to practice it and try to get better. Well, welcome back. Uh, we're at that point of the tiling here under the vanity uh, that I need to start grouting. So I wanted to make sure I get all the prep work ready to go first. So since the last uh, video I showed, I took out that ledger board. I uh, After work last night, I put these two rows of tile on. I did the back buttering just like before and then I blue taped them to the one that was already dried. And so I got that done and now I'm at the point where I can uh, start to grout this. I want to make sure to grout this before I start building the face frame uh, for the vanity cabinet because once I get that face frame on there it's going to be a lot tighter to get in there. So this will just make it uh, <laughs> better on me. Uh, to grout this area right now. So what I have ready is I have the blue tape uh, lined on both sides. Uh, this is drywall and so um, I didn't want to get any on that. Over here I'm going to be putting tile so I just don't want any uh, grout behind there. The grout I'm using uh, dries very fast, has a very quick work time. want to make sure and use gloves and then have your rubber float ready. And um, I might only be able to do half of this at a time because, uh, like I said, it has a very uh, short window of working time. So you need to make sure you have your buckets of water ready to go with your rags. And that way you can have um, a smooth project. So on things like this, uh, planning out ahead of time before you actually start, uh, it'll save you time in the long run. And so I hope this tip helps and we'll see how this ends up going. You start from the bottom or top. Um, I like to start from the top and work my way down because I know that I'm a little bit on the messy side and stuff ends up dropping. I don't know if it really matters. What you do want to do though is when you're putting the grout in, make sure you have your rubber float at like a 45 degree angle and just really work it in there. You want to get, to get all the way in all the grout so you don't want just on the surface level. So you want to make sure that as you're working it in uh, that you get like a 45 degree angle really push it in all those grout lines you know instead of rushing to try to uh, grout this whole thing in one one uh, portion I, I rather take my time, make sure I get it all in the grout lines nice and tight, uh, get it really uh, deep down in the grout, and I'll have a better job at the end instead of trying to rush it. So sometimes it's better to just take your time. Might take a little longer, but you're the one living with it, you're a DIYer. And when you're doing it yourself, it's okay if you take a little longer. Because you're the one that's going to have to stare at it. And when you show it off like something you did yourself, um, you want to be proud of it. Take a little bit more time and do a nice job. It's not worth rushing it. My grandpa told me... Uh, 
growing up. Anything worth doing is worth doing right. And boy was he right. If you're going to spend the time and money and try to do a project like this, do it right. Try to do the best you can. Even if it takes a little longer. It will be worth it in the end. So, as you can see, navigating around the pipes here, it's a little tight. Just take the time, work around. With this specific grout, you're going to start feeling it right away as soon as it starts setting up on you. It won't have that smooth drag anymore. It'll start rubbing. Uh, almost like it's hitting the brakes on you. It starts drying up. It's not going in the um, grout lines. It starts dragging on the tiles a little more. So you'll know right away. It'll tell you. Now if you're using regular grout that you mixed up yourself or it's a, just a regular traditional grout, you can do this whole thing in one shot uh, quite easily but for me with this stuff I prefer it um, came highly recommended uh, my in-laws paid to have their shower done by a professional and this is the stuff he used because it's, um, it's like mold and mildew resistant. It's very, very hard once it dries. I think it's like an epoxy grout. And it is worth it in the end. It's easier to clean. You don't have to worry about the mold and mildew. So I could start filling this as I'm dragging along the tiles. So I'm getting to the end of this work time here. So I'm gonna try to get around these pipes real quick before I start wiping, wiping the stuff off. <laughs> try to get it in around that edge. This will be covered up, but I want it to be nice and watertight. In case water ever gets down the wall for some reason. I uh, don't want it getting in behind there. I know it's a waterproof uh, backer board I use, but I don't want it getting back there. Just because I don't want to get in that practice of doing a bad job. Alright, so now that I've made a complete mess, I'm going to try to get as much of this off with this rubber uh, trowel as I can before I start getting the rags going. So this is all about getting the surface. You do not want to push hard on this right here. Uh, it's just about getting as much of the grout off of the surface of the tile without digging in to the actual grout lines so i'm just going to take this initial rag and lightly graze over the tile to kind of lightly scrub off this excess grout off of there because i don't want this drying on there this dries on there and uh you're gonna have a tough time this stuff gets really hard. That is not very flattering the camera angle. Sorry guys. Get as much as you can without digging into the uh, actual grout lines itself. You, again, like I said, you do not want this drying on you. If this were a darker tile, you would definitely see a very hazy um, color on top of the tile with this being white and a light gray grout it's a little harder to see but just trust me if this was a darker tile um, didn't matter what the grout color is at that point 
you're gonna see the haze on there with this white tile you have to shine a light on it to get there so um, I have a different rag now I put that rag in the bucket so I got a new clean rag now and I'm just gonna fold it in pieces and I'm just gonna lightly start grazing over um, I've seen to have better results if I go at an angle so don't follow grout lines unless you have to like when I get up against these pipes there's no other choice but as you're doing like a big area if you're doing a floor try to wipe it at like a 45 degree angle it'll just help you uh, not ruin the grout you put in and don't worry if you missed any spots it's more important to follow the work time of this grout than it is if you missed one the first because it's easier to add more when you go to put your grout on again in a different area you could go do some touch-ups it's much more important to uh, get the grout off the tile with this specific grout so now I'm gonna flip it so then I got a clean rag again and you you want to keep this wet so even if you're working in another area when you go to wipe that other area down like we just did you again want to keep going over this and I was going with grout lines there but I was going very gently and I was doing that intentionally to try to smooth out the edges um, of where the grout touches the tile I was noticing a little bit of um, inconsistencies there so that'll just help if you do it really light it'll just touch the it'll just grab the big stuff that, or the, the stuff that's raised off that's causing the issue so once you're at a point where you're happy with it then you can move on to the next section all right so i'm here to the next section now and i'm just going to start repeating that process um, after just working with that around the pipes i might have to do a third round just because I didn't get as far as I thought I would. But that's okay. You know, another 10 minutes or so. It's worth it. You want a nice, nice job. Uh, nice looking job when you're done. Now I just want to point out, along the edge here, you don't have to worry about getting uh, grout in there. Like if you had a gap. You'd want to get the grout in there but I butted my tiles right up against the wall and then this company sells uh, some grout caulking uh, in the exact color uh, of this grout and it's designed for in whenever you have vertical plane changes or horizontal plane changes you want to put that in there um, on those so an example would be um, if you're if you have tile coming up to a sink then that sink you want to make sure to have uh, the grout caulking around the sink around this edge here I'll end up putting a piece of tape when I'm done and putting that grout caulking along the seam there in my shower I'm gonna have it in the corners of the shower in, in my niches so anywhere I'm going to change planes so for example two walls coming together uh, your niche where you have uh, your back and side touching um, I'm going to put it there so the last video this is an area underneath the sink it's in my master bedroom um, not my master bedroom my master bathroom 
and I'm redoing the bathroom and we are building a custom vanity under the sink here I purchased some a slab of quartz that was a, a cutoff from somebody's kitchen and I brought it home and I cut it for all the pieces I needed for my countertop, for my shower bench, for my knee shelves, for my knee wall, um, top plates, or caps, or whatever you call them. And I used it for my countertop. And so I just built a 2x4 frame and uh, set that on there. And then on the underneath part, I'm going to build a custom vanity. Um, out of some barn wood. If you watched my bathroom remodel for our kids' bathroom, I'm using the same wood. Uh, you could actually see it right here on the uh, medicine cabinet frame. It's going to be that same barn wood that I'm going to build the uh, vanity cabinet frame out of so my working time on here is pretty good I feel pretty good about it right now it's a big difference when you're not having to deal with uh, the piping Get some kind of color in there Wonder if that's like the the resin or something for this. I think it's epoxy out. Know. There's got to be some kind of chemical reaction when it hits air. So you just want to make sure check all of your outlines. And you got it nice and deep in there. Notice this spot right here, I missed. Take a step back. Make sure I'm not in the way, yep. Oh, there's a big one. You guys are probably looking at the whole time. Like, when is he gonna hit that spot? There you go. All right. Definitely starting to feel it dry up on me. So, definitely coming towards the end of my working time. You'll feel it. You don't, you'll, you'll have these smooth glides across and all of a sudden it's like you got brakes on your rubber trowel. There is directions for the uh, setting timers and stuff on the, the box of that. But for those of you who know me, I don't follow directions very well sometimes. So, I did the first time though, in the kids' bathroom. But I noticed after having to do a bunch of sections at a time with timer, uh, you start to get a feel for it of what it feels like so after I, I cleaned all this up don't put that bag in the bucket it, it's got all kinds of garbage in there unless you put something nice and clean down so I'm just going to throw end up throwing this away again I just want to get that grout off of the tile is that I can fix, I can fix holes like a, in, in the grout. I can fix, a, you know, any issues with the grout lines uh, a little later. The important part here is to get this stuff off of the tile. Because you do not want this drying on you. Don't, don't do this job if you're going to get interrupted by something and have to you know run and do something you need to 
uninterrupted time um, during this part. Because if I had to run and do something right now and then came back, this grout would be dried on that tile and it would be so hard to get off that I'd want to rip the whole thing out and start over. That, that's how bad it is. Now some of you might have done it before and found an easy way of scraping a razor blade or something, but to me it's whatever you're going to do to make it where it gets it off there, you're probably damaging the tile. So again, can't emphasize this enough. Get that stuff off of the face of the tile and then just keep wiping it down. So you can't see because I probably have the camera angle screwed up. I'm going over the whole thing again to get that haze off there because you can't see it very well. But I can see it in the reflection of the tile uh, when it starts to have an issue. Because it's a little hazy. It's getting a lot better okay so once you're at a point um, where you've done a manageable section like this you know if you're doing a, if you're doing a shower bath shower or something may, maybe do one one of the three walls at a time you know take them uh, your 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 walls you're probably gonna do uh, um, maybe eight square feet at a time whatever you can get done and just do one wall at a time and then just uh, make sure it looks nice and clean before moving on so again this process with this grout probably takes much longer than other grouts but to me it's worth it you get a lot nicer in product all right get some kind of hair on there so now i want to make sure and try to stay at that 45 degree angle like i was telling you earlier now that i have the grout lines looking like the way i do now, if you're doing this on a floor, just throw your rag out and just drag it. It, it works really well. But when you're on a vertical surface like this, it's, I don't know, those of you who are professional tires probably watching this laughing at me, but I don't know an easier way to clean this off. I know the floor is a lot easier. But, uh, yeah, definitely starting to see the shine and reflection in the tile that haze is going away so I'm doing the uh, kids bathroom I found out no matter what you do keep wiping, wiping this you're always gonna have that haze and you're gonna have to let dry and then you take a dry one of these when it's done and you literally just buff each tile and it comes right off so that's it for this video hope you'd enjoy we're going to get the vanity cabinet done next. Thanks for watching. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe. And if you're interested to see how I build my custom vanity cabinet, then hit that bell and it will notify you when I release a new video. If you like this video and feel it's worth sharing, then share it with a friend. It would really help me out. I hope you have a wonderful day.